This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. The views expressed by guests on this program do not necessarily represent the views of the host or owners of the Doggy Diva Show and do not necessarily constitute endorsement of products. Medical information discussed by guests on this program are those of the guests and is only for informational purposes and should not replace medical advice by your local veterinarian professional. Hi, this is Susan Marie from the Doggy Diva Show. This week, summer pet safety tips, celebrating July 4th safely with your pets, and summer fun projects for you and your fur kids. That's what's on our show this week. Let's get started. Hey. Did you hear that? What is that? It's the bark heard round the world. The Doggy Diva Show. Here's national award-winning author and animal advocate, Susan Marie. Hi. Welcome to the Doggy Diva Show, the show for animal lovers. I'm your host, Susan Marie, and as always, I'm joined by my canine co-hosts, the Doggy Divas themselves, Francesca, Coco, and our newest little diva, Miss Olive. Miss Olive is the cute little Italian greyhound rescue in the picture with the microphone. Thank you for joining us today as we bring the experts in the pet and animal world right to you. Contact us at thedoggydiva.com. That's the D O G G Y D I V A dot com. We love hearing from you. So go grab a cup of coffee and your pet's favorite treat, and we'll be back in just a moment. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Doggy Diva Show. I'm here with Monica Layton, president of Professional Pet Sitting, with our Pet Tip of the Week. And Monica, summer's here. It's so hot. Do you have any tips, like, for how to keep our pets cool or, or comfortable during these summer months? So, yes, the temperatures are warming Ooh. up. The sun is <laughs> shining longer Ooh. during the day. And it's the perfect time. People are wanting to get outdoors camping, swimming, you know, all your fun summer activities and dogs are certainly don't want to be excluded. (laughs) Um, So before you guys hit the dog park and lounge in the backyard, just a couple quick things when it comes to our pet paws. Paws are a summertime necessity, like check, paw check. So the ground is going to get hotter a lot faster. The sun being as strong as it is during this time of the year, um, that leads for hot sidewalk, um, sensitive feet, and your pet's paws are really sensitive, a lot more than what people believe sometimes. So making sure even when it comes to like earlier in the morning and later in the evening, sometimes that ground can still be pretty warm. So making sure that, you know, your paws are not getting scorched or burned um, is really important. Making sure that we're checking that pavement, keeping our hands on there. If you can put your hand on the pavement and be ex- like totally comfortable and hold that hand on there for a full five seconds without your hand becoming too warm, then you're okay. If you're putting your hand on that pavement for five seconds straight, holding it down, and it's starting to get a bit too warm or a bit uncomfortable, then it is not okay for your pet to be walking on that sidewalk or that pavement. Also, with the hot pavement and the heat, pet's paws are more sensitive during that time. They're more prone to drying out and cracking. 
So having like a little paw rub or a anti-hallergenic lotion to kind of soothe those dry and cracked skins during the summertime is also really good for keeping up with the care for your pet's paws. Another thing is we're out and about making sure that our pets are staying parasite free. So making sure that they're on their heartworm and internal parasite prevention. That way, as they're out in the soils and running around, they're not picking up something um, as far as a worm or worm larvae. And also making sure that we're on our flea and tick prevention. So that way our pets are staying parasite free when we're out and about. Another good thing about summer tip is when we are outdoors, our pets are going to be exposed to more. They're going to stink a little more than normal. <laughs> they are um, sweating. They're rolling around in the grass, swimming. They're, they're having, they're living their best life. But while you live your best life in these warm temperatures, just like we tend to do, you get a little stinkier than normal. So <laughs> that <laughs> increases your bathing in your pet. So making sure you're using a Shampoo that is not too harsh, making sure that you're watching the eyes. Soap ulcers and eyes are very, very common with increased bathing. So having a tearless shampoo, something that's not going to be a problem getting near um, the face, making sure that you're very cautious about the eyes. And then also our pet's ears are always a concern because we are swimming, we are bathing, And we do not want water and bacteria getting into those ears. Um, So ear care is very important during the warm months as well. Heat and humidity can be a smorgasbord for yeast and bacteria in our pet's ears. So making sure, and with the swimming, of course, making sure that you have like a basic ear flusher and drying solution for your pets is great. If you don't have anything at home and your pet gets into water, You can always use white rubbing alcohol and white vinegar in a 50-50 mix and just squirting some of that into your pet's ears easily. Letting them shake it out is a great tip for at-home care when you find yourself last minute without an ear flush or an ear drying solution. That way you do, do not have residual water left in those ears and you're not getting pseudomonas and your different ear infections from having that extra liquid in the ears after bathing or swimming. Also, last but not least, make sure that your pet is staying cool. If you are going on a walk in the middle of the day or you're going hiking or just being outside in your backyard for a while, they have great products that you get relatively low priced online. You can get them about anywhere. I mean, Amazon has a ton. Whatever your favorite shop or pet store is, I guarantee you they'll probably have some, but use some of the cooling products. They have great cooling mats that you can get, cooling pet beds. They have bandanas. I know um, I got some recently for my dogs on Amazon, and I got both dogs cooling pet bandanas um, that you just ice down, put in the freezer for a little while till they cool down, and they keep them on them, and it's great for hours. It was like 10 bucks for both of them really low cost and it's something that can keep your pet cool while they're outside in the heat. Um, They're relaxing out in the backyard. They have the nice little raised elevated dog beds and they have the the sun canopies on there. Like I said, you know, having a little dog pool. They have the great dog bowls that are cold insulated. So like our little Yeti cups and our different kind of cups that keep cool during the day. They have the same thing for pets. They have the Yeti brand. They also have different brands out there that you can get on Amazon as well that are a little um, more cost effective. But they have those cool pet bowls. So that way, when you put your water in there, they're staying cool for a long period of time outdoors. So all those things are great things to do and just kind of have around the house and plan for when we are out and about during our summer activities. Well, Monica, I want to thank you because these are really important. And of course, when we go out, we want to make sure that we have our pets with us in most cases. But sometimes if it's really, 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 really hot out, like Monica said, and if you want to take a walk and maybe it's later morning or mid-afternoon, make sure that you feel that um, the blacktop or, you know, any hard surface you're going to be walking on outside 
Because I know sometimes in my flip-flops, it goes right through. I feel it. So I could imagine what it's like on our little fur kids. There are little paw pads there. So be very, very careful. And a lot of the other stuff that you gave the information was really helpful. And I didn't even know about those bowls that keep the water cold because we bring the our kids out by um, the pool. And sometimes the water, even if we keep it in the shade, it gets it warms up as time goes on. I have to keep ice cubes in it. So I love that idea. And the cooling mats, I love those things. Yeah, I actually have um, the Yeti one. And I think I picked it up at like Dick's Sporting Goods um, because we were purchasing stuff for my daughter for cheer and they have them in there. And um, they work really well. I use them for my guys and they really like them. I love that. And also, I, I wanted to touch on one thing, Monica. You talked about the uh, to make sure your pup's ears are kept dry so that they don't have the bacteria and the yeast and stuff that grow in them, which I had uh, one of my dogs, Dr. Reinhardt, helped me a lot with that. And you gave this information of the 50% white, the rubbing alcohol and white vinegar, just to squirt in their ear in case you don't have some sort of a solution. And that yeah. works. This is, I've had people actually tell me who listen to the show, thank goodness that we heard about that. Cause sometimes you don't have something on hand. And when you make that, it does, it really helps their ears a lot. And I don't think people realize how important it is until your dog gets an ear infection, which one of my did at one time, it is bad. So make sure we keep their ears clean and dry. And that solution of, um, the 50% rubbing alcohol and white uh, vinegar. That's great that you, uh, you've changed a lot of lives with that little, uh, that little mixture <laughs> there, or that little concoction. So, and always make sure everybody's got their heartworm medication, their flea and tick medication, because these are the months they're the, what do they call them? The lazy, crazy, hazy days of summer. So we want to make yes. sure we enjoy them and our pets are not, sick at all and that they're healthy and that they're safe so monica as always you bring us some great tips these are great uh summer pet tips to keep our pets cool and to keep them happy and healthy so thank you so very much thank you have a great week you too we'll be back in just a moment hello everyone susan marie and miss olive here to tell you about the award-winning three book series the doggy diva diaries it is a trilogy of heartwarming and inspirational stories about Miss Olive, a lonely little rescue pup, hoping to find her forever family and friends and a life filled with love. In this series, Miss Olive learns that it doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, it's the kindness and love you have on the inside that counts. Available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and other online booksellers. And please visit us at thedoggydiva.com for more information. Thank you, everyone. Coming up, looking for ways to keep your pet safe and calm during the 4th of July celebrations? We've got the answer. Stay with us. Molly, here's your dinner. <coughs> Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your Cat Tree Tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Doggy Diva Show. As a pet parent celebrating holidays, loud noise and potentially large groups of people can cause concerns for me because I want my pets to feel safe. I want them to feel calm. So with us today to share helpful advice is the Chief Marketing Officer at Bill Jack Boots, Kim Gablin. Hey, Kim, welcome back to the show. 
And this is where I get concerned because I have one that's really, 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 really hyper around these type mm-hmm. holidays. So how can like holidays with loud noises, like the 4th of July, how can these things affect our pets? Yeah, you know, we, we love these holidays, right? It's time for family, yes. it's barbecues, we all get together. You know, we uh, some people want to throw, you know, do some fireworks, you know, make a little bit of loud noise. And that can really be um, tough on our pets, right? A lot of our dogs in particular are very sensitive, right? Our dogs always hear better than we do, uh, as we all know. And so they're, they're, they're going to always hear it better. It's going to be louder to them. It's going to be a bigger kind of sound. So what we want to do is, you know, kind of think about how can we um, kind of manage uh, everything around them, you know, um, and, and think about how to keep them safe. Um, it's kind of interesting, but uh, there's actually a 30% increase in lost pets in, you know, during the year yeah, between July wow. 4th and July 6th. And so July 5th is one of the busiest times for animal shelters. So it's really important to think about, you know, it's not just to keep them safe or to have them not be scared, but it's also to have them not run away or get out of the yard or be lost. Can you share like some tips on how to keep our fur kids kind of safe and calm during this, yeah, during these like loud times of year? <laughs> Yeah, well, and you know, and it's and it can be terrifying. It can be panicking. You know, some dogs may shake, they may bark, they may hide under furniture. So you know, um, in order to keep them kind of safe and kind of calm, you know, think about these these five things, right? You know, first of all, try to get them out and exercise them that day, right? Before everything starts, get them out. You know, kind of uh, wear them out a little bit, right? Get them a little bit tired. Um, that'll make hopefully them be a little bit less anxious, you know, because they've kind of got all of their energy kind of run to an even level. And that can sometimes really help to kind of um, minimize kind of how excited they are a little bit later. Um, I always say it's important to think about not taking them, not taking them to the fireworks display with you. Um, You know, I understand if maybe around your house you might have some neighbors. I know I have a lot of friends. Who, um, whose neighbors do shoot off fireworks, and it can be really just very scary for them and for their pets. Uh, but if you're going somewhere, you know, leave your dog at home, and you know that that will really help to kind of minimize that kind of sound and commotion that they have to deal with. Because um, you you can't just assume that they like fireworks just because they don't seem afraid, yeah. right? So some dogs might, you know, might not do anything when they're upset. They might not bark or cry. They might just hover. They might excessively yawn. So you don't always know when they're upset by it. Um, you know, certainly um, if you do have neighbors that are shooting off fireworks, you know, maybe consider having them spend the day visiting a friend, you know. Well, now um, that's maybe good got, advice, uh, yeah. Remove them yeah, from the family situation member, altogether. Or, you know, maybe yeah. there's a, um, one of his dog play dates yes. <laughs> or, her, or her dog play dates that maybe they enjoy spending some time with. And maybe it's a little bit quieter at their house. Um, it's great to be able to kind of just get them out of that whole area so that they don't even have to worry about you know, anything happening and they can just have a nice quieter, lower stress holiday and actually have a lot of fun with their other, you know, four footed friend that they're hanging out with. So that could be really good. You know, certainly, um, you know, distracting, it can be helpful too. you know, um, uh, can you put the television on maybe a little louder than usual? Not, not really loud, but a little louder or maybe some radio music can sometimes be very calming to dogs, um, especially classical music, uh, maybe playing some of the, his favorite or her favorite indoor games. You know, that, that can sometimes, again, be distracting to kind of keep, get them to focus on something else, you know, and, and, you know, and not to kind of reinforce their fears. You know, you don't want to cuddle them too much or cuddle them or, or you know, um, sometimes you talk in that little sing-songy voice. I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> I have the tendency to do that. <laughs> and so, um, you know, you, you don't want to kind of make it, make them feel like a little bit more anxious because you're also kind of afraid and then they're picking up on your fear and then, you know, it kind of becomes like a vicious circle, right? So... Um, and, you know, I know that some dogs, uh, and I don't know if you've tried this, too, but I know that some dogs do really well with a canine anxiety wrap. I, I have one on, yeah, on Coco wears one whenever for thunder, for any mm-hmm. storms, and also for the holidays that have the kabooms. Yeah, so, you know, so that can also be very, that can also be very helpful, very calming. They feel very secure because they're kind of wrapped up. So you want to, you know, probably try that in advance. So if you're kind of preparing to do that, you might want to do that like the day or two at least before. Try it, see how your dog responds positively, um, and then, you know, kind of see if that works. So, there, you know, there's a couple of ways you can do that. But again, as much as you can avoid it, um, that would be the, the best part, um, best part, and the best thing to do to kind of help them have a, a safe and fun and a, you know, less stressful holiday. Well, and two, in order to, you know, a really key important thing is to keep our pets healthy and safe, of course, by ensuring that they are safe and they have a very happy life. 
but also we have to focus on like key nutrition that's needed for our dogs so that they could be healthy. And a lot of times that's through food, good food, good quality food and treats. Can you tell us a little about that? Yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, I think that it's really easy to, you know, to think about, to like lose track of what, what's really good for your dog, what's healthy. And we always talk about how nutrition is really the foundation of their health. So you want to always keep that in your sights. You know, make sure you're focused on getting them a food that's very good, that's a high quality food that starts with a, a protein as the number one ingredient. You know, the way that ingredients are on the label, it's um, by weight. So the, the number one ingredient is the thing that's in there the heaviest, the most, that's in that, um, that, that's in that ingredient panel. So you want to look for something that has a protein in number one because that's really critical. And I know at Jack we use 25 pounds of fresh chicken to make a 30-pound bag of, of our adult select, for example. So um, so that's one way to kind of know that you're, you're getting good food. Um, and, you know, you want to tailor that nutrition for the things that they need. And so I know that one of the exciting things that's happening at Jack right now is that we are launching – two brand new treats and uh, and we've named them smart jack <laughs> i love that so we like we really love the name and we they're smart why are they smart because one of them is to help with digestive support and the other one is to help with skin and coat support so so we wanted to be able to kind of you know we get a lot of great feedback on our treats and we of course want to make sure that whether we're feeding food or treats they're healthy for our pets and so we really felt like you know two things that people really care very much about are digestion and skin and coat and so we felt like coming out with a functional treat, a treat that's like specifically there to be able to help support those things was, uh, was really a good idea. So we've got the digestive support treat, and that's actually made with um, oatmeal and blueberries, mm-hmm. and it has a prebiotic in there. So I know we talk a lot, Sue, about probiotics, yes. right? And those are, are beneficial bacteria that, that help um, with digestion and immune function. But um, prebiotics are actually uh, the nutrients that feed the probiotics, right? So they're probiotic food, so to speak. And huh. so, pre, we, so we use prebiotics, um, and the one we use is a fructooligosaccharide. It's, it's, a, it's a big word. <laughs> I love to say it, though. It's a fun word. <laughs> and, uh, and so it helps to, again, helps to, to be a prebiotic and feed those probiotics, and it also has a gentle fiber blend to help support their healthy digestion. So, um, so that's one of them. That's the Digestive and Support Smart Jack. And then we have a Skin and Coat Support Smart Jack, which uh, has linoleic acid, um, and that's um, it's a guaranteed level of that to help support the skin and coat, and it's uh, made with sweet potatoes, mm. and so, uh, so that's kind of yummy. A lot of dogs do like sweet potatoes, and of course, it's got chicken liver for its irresistible taste, so we you know so we kind of um, have two different options that are, that are great, especially if you're, you know, maybe you're feeding a food for a sensitive dog now. It's great to be able to pair with, you know, if you have a digestive sensitivity or a skin and coat sensitivity, they're great treats to pair with those. And, and obviously, they pair really great with our sensitive solutions um, formulas as well. Oh, wow. That's, wow. That's very exciting. That is yeah, like, yeah, so well, exciting. Really, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, last year we launched Slim Jacks. So those are, you know, those are low fat treats. And now we have um, these two Smart Jacks, which are, you know, again, to, to help support some key things that, uh, some key health things that people are very concerned about. So, um, so hopefully we, you can have some fun. You can give them a healthy treat, but you can also know that you're helping to support some of the things that you, you know, your dog may have health concerns about. I think that's great. And and the flavor of the digestive support is oatmeal and blueberries, so that's yummy. Yeah. And then sweet potato yeah. and uh, chicken yep. liver. Ooh. I, yeah. I, I, so, I know yeah, so- I know someone who's going to be lined up for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and those are actually launching at, uh, at PetSmart, so um, so we're really excited to uh, to be able to get those out there and and to have something new. You know, I mean, yeah. we have a lot of great treats, and it's great to to have variety and to be able to get to use a different variety for training, for rewarding, and so now you know you've got a couple more options in in the Jack line to be able to choose from. And that's so great too, Kim, because it's not only is it yummy and your your dogs will love it, but it's also doing things that are very important, especially now as we want to keep our pets healthy, have the healthy coats and digestion is so, so, so important. And it's, uh, it's a yummy treat. So, so they don't even know it's good for them. Yeah. You know, I, you know, and Bill Jack, we always talk about how, you know, we just want to keep it easy. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't want nutrition to be difficult. We don't want it to be not be yummy. You know, we want it to be, you know, easy to do, um, easy to be able to understand, easy to be able to use, you know, easy to be able to get results. And we want it to be able to be tasty, right? So those are the two things that are really important to us. So, 
Um, so what, like I said, we're really very excited about these two new treats that are coming out. So Awesome. Well, Kim, tell us about Bill Jack, where we can get Bill Jack. And also you guys are on social media. You have your newsletter. Yeah, you know, come out to our website. It's BillJack.com. It's B-I-L-J-A-C.com. And we've got a lot of information out there. You can sign up for our Best Friends Club monthly newsletter where we have some offers. You can get some savings on your treats or your food. Um, we've got great uh, articles that we put out in there. And I know that uh, I know that later in July we'll actually have um, Smart Jack, so an article about that coming out. So that'll be, you know, kind of interesting to read. And then um, we're also out on, you know, Facebook and um, Instagram Pinterest and Twitter. So, you know, come join us, tell us about your dog, you know, kind of your experience, you know, how can we help you? You know, we, uh, we, we do a lot of um, talking, you know, with people out on Facebook and, and Instagram. So happy to be able to help out there as well. Well, Kim, thank you so much for being our guest today and for sharing valuable advice with our listeners about how to keep our pets safe and healthy during the times when it might be a little loud and very chaotic out there. And also for uh, premiering those great new treats, uh, the new Smart Jack. So thank you very much. And thank you for always bringing great information to our listeners. Are these pet parents, me being one of them, appreciates it so much. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, and happy July 4th. Happy, safe, and fun July 4th. Absolutely, you too. We'll be back in just a moment. Coming up, are you looking for a healthy and fun way to bond with your pet? We've got the answer. Stay tuned. Hey, everyone. Michelle Fern here. I was fostering a puppy for a friend this week, and I was so glad I had the Diggs Revel Collapsible Dog Crate. This crate is fantastic. It ticks all the boxes, and as always with Diggs, it's safety first. No need to worry about injuries to paws or jaws. It's convenient. It sets up in less than a minute. You can raise and collapse it with one hand. Easy to transport and easy to clean. And you know what? It looks great too, like a piece of furniture. I love it. And if you're traveling this summer, make sure you check out Dig's five-star crash test rated passenger travel carrier. The passenger travel carrier is small enough to fit right under your airline seat, but with plenty of space for your fur babe. And I have a special offer for you. For a limited time, get 15% off your entire Diggs order. Go to digs.pet and use promo code PETLIFE15. That's D-I-G-G-S dot pet with promo code PETLIFE15 to get 15% off your entire order. Order today. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Dot com. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the Doggy Diva Show. Jonna Devereaux is a clinical pet nutritionist, the director of nutrition and wellness for Bow Wow Labs, and owner of Fetch, a holistic pet boutique and supply store in Rhode Island. Jonna is not only a leader in the world for pets, health, and nutrition, but also recognizes the importance of quality leisure time and bonding with our fur kids. And with us today to share a fun bonding project that you could do with your pup and you'll be creating a priceless work of art for yourself or as a gift for that favorite pet parent, family, or friend in your life. So it is my pleasure to welcome back to the Doggy Diva Show, Jonna Devereaux. Hey, Jonna, welcome back. Hey, thank you for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. Now, for some of our first-time listeners, can you just share a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so I'm a dog mom, first and foremost, because that's the most important. I'm Absolutely. also a clinical pet nutritionist, as you mentioned, and I am an advocate for all things pets. Basically, I am. Um, I go out and I educate people on how to feed their dogs or cats properly, how to really expand, um, you know, the holistic environment. Looking at the mental um, wellness, their, you know, the nutritional wellness, um, just their environment. Everything that combined is what's going to make a healthy pet, and that's that's what I go out and teach people about. And that's so important. And as a professional in the pet world. And a dog mom, most important. How mm -hmm. important is like quality bonding time with our pets? I mean, quality of life is everything. 
you can have a dog or a cat that is eating the best of food, but if they aren't happy, if they don't have that emotional connection with their human, then it's not really a happy life, is it? Just just like us. So um, it's really important. I think it's one of the most important things. Well, and I saw, I happened to catch one of these uh, fun bonding projects that it was like a great leisure project. Yeah. I love doing things with my pets that involve yeah. them. And I saw that you did this. And so I'd love you to share it with our listeners. Cause I think not only is it like a fun bonding project and it, it's a very creative way to do it and it's fun. So would you mind just sharing the, your little uh, work of art here that you have? Yeah, so it's a paw print um, bouquet that we've done on canvas with my little girl, Lola. Um, basically, what I decided is that I have a lot of art around my house, but I don't have anything necessarily that is specific to my to my pup. And so I wanted to incorporate a fun activity where she and I could bond together and I could have something that is a unique um, piece of art at the end. So what I did was I went out and I bought a canvas and I bought some non-toxic paint. Obviously, you can find that in the children's section of any uh, local you know, art and craft store. And we went outside in the grass and we kind of just had some some fun moments of bonding. And I let her sniff everything. And then, you know, you put the paw in um, in the paint and you just make little paw prints on the canvas, um, washing off the paws in between, of course, because you want to make certain that they're not licking it, even though it is non-toxic, they shouldn't be ingesting paint. And then when I was done wiping her paws, I just drew in some little lines like it was flowers. And I have this really cute little paw print um, bouquet that is now a piece of art on my wall. I'm actually looking at it right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it because, you know, sometimes for ourselves, we're looking for, oh, what could I do? And we're willing to spend all this money to get these you know, personalized or creative things, which is wonderful. I'm all for that. But I thought that yeah. this was something that was so special and not only for you to make it for yourself, but maybe as a gift for your, one of your fur friends, uh, like a pet parent or a grandma or a grandpa or an aunt and uncle, something, someone who will treasure it as much as you do or, or do it with your friends. Have like a little event. And a little wine, a yes, little wine and paint night. Yes, have your own <laughs> little wine and paint night. Get your little drop cloth and go. <laughs> no, I love the idea. And it's really simple. You just need non-toxic washable finger paint. And as you said, something children could use, a blank canvas, paint brushes, a palette, disposable uh uh, recycled paper plates. Yeah, are I use I use paper plates just so that I could actually put the paint onto you know uh, onto something easily and disposable and nothing that was going to cause any discomfort to Lola when we were doing this. Yeah. Obviously, obviously, that's the most important part. If you have a dog that is not necessarily fond of you touching their paws, this may not be the best bonding experience for you, right? Um, but if you have a dog that is okay with you touching their paws, then this is something that's so super fun. And then just the, a wet cloth, because like I mentioned, you do want to make certain, even though it's non-toxic paint, you want to make certain that you get everything off the pads. Of, and you know, and also done. you have to get the, it, it's a camera ready moment. So make sure your camera is yes. ready because you're <laughs> going to want to get a picture of this because it's, it's fun. It's fun yeah. for you. It's fun for your pet. If you're doing it with a friend, I believe it's, I just think it's, I think it's a great idea. And there's so many pet parents out there who want to do things that are fun and memorable. I just thought this yes. was a great idea. So, and for any holiday that you have coming up, what a great present to give to somebody and you, they'd go, well, what is that? That's my dog's paw prints into flowers. Technically, if you really have, um, if you have a lot of family with dogs too, I mean, you could always do it with their dog yes. for them. Yes, I so. think it's a great idea. And it's and it's not expensive. It's really unique. And it's a keepsake that, that you'll have forever. So I just wanted to share that with everybody because I just thought it was like a really fun idea. So I thank you for sharing that. But before we go, what I want to ask is because you are the go-to person, can you share with us some, just a few like top important health tips that maybe pet parents should be aware of? Well, the most important is going to be to build your dog or cat's immune system, make certain that they have a better immune system so that they're healthier. Um, so you can do this by, you know, feeding a fresher food diet. Even if you're feeding kibble, you can add some fresh food to the bowl. Um, if you can, you feed a less processed diet at least one meal a day, if not throughout all meals. Um, diversifying their gut microbiome is really important. So you're going to do that by using um, a variety of different probiotics. 
feeding them prebiotics, which is the food for the beneficial bacteria, right, Mm -hmm. in the gut. Um, You want to add therapeutic supplements to reduce inflammation. Inflammation is a leading cause of many diseases in our pets. So you can do that with, um, you know, turmeric, which is rich in curcumin, or you can use um, therapeutic mushrooms. There's a large variety of um, products that are on the market right now. We're so lucky to be in this time where people are paying more attention to the health of our pets, that we have so many options that it's really easy to find this um, these products out there and just help your, help your animals as much as possible. Of course, exercise them, right? Yes. Every, every, every being, these are at the end of the day, they are animals that are meant to move. And so, you know, again, going back to the earlier uh, comment about making certain that they have like a holistic well being and balance, you can feed them a great diet. But if they're not, you know, getting the physical exercise and stimulation, if they're not getting the mental stimulation and satisfaction, then they're really not holistically healthy. So it's really just looking at the bigger picture and trying to do the best you can to get their bodies to move, to get their brains to think and to feed them nutritious food that is as whole as possible and as fresh as possible. And those are great tips. And one of the things that we started the show with was the importance of bonding with your pet. And I always find that going out for a walk, uh, do getting exercise for them and exercise for me, it's a great mm-hmm. bonding experience too. So it's something that you're doing, you're keeping your pet healthy and you're also going through this bonding experience. So there's so many different ways that we could work to improve and maintain our pet's health. And you're uh, the go-to person. You're an expert in that. So I'm so glad you shared that information. Now, where can the listeners go to learn more about you, Bow Wow Labs, all of the you know, all of the stuff that you're doing? Yeah. So you can go to our website, which is bowwowlabs.com, or you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram, or check out our YouTube channel where I actually post a lot of recipes that I create, as well as interviews um, that I've done with some, you know, leading um thought leaders in the in the pet space um and that's at bow wow labs on across all channels awesome well thank you jonna for being with us today thank you for sharing such a fun uh little uh, thing i can't believe that you could make flowers out of paw prints once i saw it i yeah. said i have to have her on to tell because i know that the people that listen are kind of like they're that same type pet parent that i, I hope, am I yeah hope, yeah i hope they all try it because i have to tell you it is the cutest thing and every time i look at it which is every day multiple times a day it makes me smile it's just <laughs> such a fun little it's a fun final product But at the same point in time, every time I look at it, I remember the fun that I had with my girl Lola when we were making it. And those are memories that you just, you know, that they are, they're keepsakes, they're things that you treasure. Absolutely. So uh, thank you again for sharing uh, really fun and healthy information with our listeners who are pet parents who are very interested in that. So I thank you. Again, why don't you give your contact information out one more time? Yes, bowwowlabs.com, and you can find us again on social media at Bow wow Labs. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for being our guest, and thank you for coming back on the show. Thank you. All right. We'll be back in just a moment. Pet Life Radio, the number one pet radio network on the planet, joins forces with iHeartRadio to put the power of your pets in your pocket. Awesome. Download the iHeartRadio app and rock Pet Life Radio on your phone, on your tablet, on your Xbox, in your car. Pet talk, pet tunes, and fun pet times. <laughs> Pet Life Radio and iHeartRadio. Positively Possum. We would like to thank our guests this week. And also, as our doggy divas always say, please love your pets because they love you unconditionally. And please remember to adopt, foster, spay, neuter, and microchip. And as always, please have a great diva week, everyone. That's all for this episode of The Doggy Diva Show. To find out more, go to our website, thedoggydiva.com. Also, find us on our Facebook page, The Doggy Diva Show, and tell your fellow dog lovers about it. Don't miss Susan Marie, Miss Olive, and The Doggy Divas right here for the next episode. See you again soon. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.